Hello, I'm Jay Diaz, and today we're going to be starting the UK orchestra list because yesterday I went to the Association of British Orchestras Conference 2022, and there was a lot of racist bullshit said <laughs> that was really sort of disturbing, and like this panel created this safe white space but completely forgot about everyone else typical and i mean, I mean the, the usual things were said like you know someone was like well if we program living composers underrepresented composers we'll lose 25 percent of our audience you know or they said um you know if we only commission women then we're leaving out we're excluding white male artist and there was there's another just like gold nugget that was just drove me nuts i can't remember it but it'll come to me in the video um but it was just really silly because like people don't realize that okay yes if you program different music that isn't what you've been usually doing which is white and dead maybe alive your audience is going to change, and you have to be okay with that, um, because underrepresented people aren't going to go and listen to your white ableist bullshit program, all Beethoven, all Mozart, like, who gives a fuck about them, just let them die. Not to say that I don't hate some of their music, but we need to have more equity <laughs> in orchestral programs, um, in soloist programs, in chamber programs and settings. Um, you know, and, and then this whole idea of leaving behind white males artists, you know, because we're choosing to commission people whose stories aren't usually heard, people whose music isn't usually heard. And it's, it's, that's implying that there is some sort of white male systemic oppression and there isn't the decision to commission underrepresented composers for example is not in any way helping to oppress the white male composer <laughs> because every other opportunity right now in 2022 on february 11th is going to white males dead or alive <laughs> yeah so it when you have an ensemble and you decide to you know commit to just com commissioning working with underrepresented musicians you, you're creating space for people who normally aren't invited who are kept out of these white spaces um and it was it's just really weird that people were thinking like it was just insane to me so today we're gonna do we're gonna look at five or uh, ensembles one is a vocal ensemble but i have my trusty list here of uk um, orchestras there's about 98 it's a nice number um i'll sort of there's and then I'll, I'll i'll be doing like separate videos videos for the uk ensembles and videos for the u.s ensembles um yeah the u.s has a lot 289 on my list um okay so we're starting today we're gonna start with the bbc Philharmonic Orchestra. Now let's see about the orchestra. So we're going to do our huge. We're going to look at who the director is. Probably a white male. Oh, oh. Hold on. Um, conductors. The conductors are Omer Mir Welber. John Stuhlgaard, I think. Ludovic Morlo. All dudes. Gross. Fail there. So, I'm going to see if it'll let me click so we can read about them. Um, so, Omar is bursting into his new role they say <laughs> i love these bios they're just so quirky um so he's conducted a bunch of orchestras around the world 
from London Phil. Not going to try and say that one. Pittsburgh Symphony. Weird. Like the Pittsburgh. Weird. I think I know why. Um, yeah. So he's been around. John. They never really say if these are British born or not, and I wish they would. It's important. So John's the chief guest conductor of the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra, principal guest conductor of Canada's National Arts Centre Orchestra, Ottawa. Um, and has been the artistic director of the Leplen Chamber Orchestra for 25 years. Okay. Yeah, and then similar to Omar's, directed European orchestras, some U.S. orchestras. Don't see any, like, Chinese or Japanese orchestras. Or Yeah, okay. So the huge. And Ludovic, the associate artist. Page not found. Oh no. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the concert diary. <clears throat> oh, this is weird. Celebrating diversity in music live. We haven't had diversity in a while, I hear. <laughs> um, so let's see. So they're doing some St. George, Ollie Osmond, and Margaret Bonds. Wow. Wow. So this just happened on the 2nd of February. So hmm, it's already happened. Okay, I was just going to try and click... I know Margaret Bonds. I know St. George's. Um, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Starting off on a strong foot. <laughs> okay, so then the next concert. So this is what I'm afraid of, though. They're going to do one diversity concert, and then everything else is going to be white. <laughs> That was talk at the conference yesterday, but that is a problem. It's tokenism. Like, you need to have diversity in every concert. Like, you need to have equity in every concert. So, let's see. Female, male, male. So, they have gender representation. They don't have gender equity, considering the playtime. So, Galena gets 12 minutes. Well, Shasti, Kovic, Shasti, if you will, and Dvorak. Um, so Shasti gets 25 minutes. Dvorak gets 39 minutes. I don't think that's okay. I don't know why that's okay. I don't know why people think that's okay. But it's not okay. <laughs> the next concert is on the 12th of February. Tomorrow, they're playing some Hindemith. Some Sadikova, I don't know Sadikova, some Schumann, and some Tibet. So, man, 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 I don't know who Sadikova is. Okay, let's look. Aziza Sadikova. This is exciting. I love when I find out about new composers. Um, okay, Aziza, let's go to the bio, let's go to the bio. As far as I can tell, they're alive. Super cool website. Oh, okay. Aziza Sadikova is a Berlin-based composer from Uzbekistan. She studied piano and composition at Uspensky Special Music School for Gifted Children. Um, then went to the Tashkent State Conservatory. Um, she graduated with an MA from Royal Birmingham Conservatoire, Trinity College of Music, London. Oh my god, she studied with Alwyn Pritchard. I would love to study with her. Oof, don't mean to make that creepy. Um, okay, we're going to leave this up. I need to hear more of Aziz's music. 
Okay, this is okay. So programming wise, this is terrible, right? Because the white males get over an hour's worth of playtime, and Aziza gets nineteen. Not okay. Um, okay. So the next concert is the eighteenth. Rachmaninoff, Beethoven, Bizet. <laughs> Boring. We don't need to have these all-white concerts. We, we just don't. All-white male concerts. No. Okay. Next one is 22nd of February. Um, ugh, they're doing two Elgars. Oh, sorry. Okay, so they're doing like... So they're doing the same symphony number one, but the first part of the concert is excerpts and discussions with, I assume, who the conductor that day is, Stephen Johnson. And then there's going to be an interval, and then they're going to do the whole work, which is 49 fucking minutes. A concert devoted to one white male. No! Okay, I'm done. I'm done. Like, good job on... Look, and then a whole concert for for Williams, Ralph Vaughn Williams. I, why? They're literally doing a symphony by Williams, and then another piece on Wenlock Edge, and then another symphony. They're doing two symphonies and three pe- three pieces by the same white dude. No. This is the problem. Like, how are underrepresented compo- Like, where are the disabled composers? Where are the queer composers? Where are the black and brown composers? Asian composers? Where? You make no room for them. Okay, the next... The next one... Is the BBC National Orchestra and Chorus of Wales. So let's go to our orchestra. Principal conductor is Ryan Bancroft. Conductor laureate is Tadaki Otaka. Composer and association, Gavin Higgins. Composer affiliate, Sarah Leanne Lewis. See, this is the bullshit. Like, why isn't... Why is Gavin Higgins, who I'm pretty sure is a white male, why is he the main, yeah, see, and I'm not saying that, it, you know, nothing about his music, but why is the diversity slot always the affiliate position? Why isn't it, why isn't Sarah the main, you know, that usually tends to happen is orchestras will will say, oh, we need to diversify, and instead of putting underrepresented people front and center they put them on the alcoves on the sides and that's not okay okay now let's look at the diary so again this is the bbc national orchestra of wales franz schmidt one concert for one male disgusting Next concert is the 10th of February. They're just playing a Tchaikovsky. (laughs) Another concert to one male. White male. Two for two. Oh, three for three. So then on Thursday the 17th, oh my god, they're doing Stravinsky, Prokofiev, Brahms. Fuck! Like, just let these people die already. (laughs) Honestly. Oh, and then the next concert, oh, it's the same. They're doing the same thing. Okay, and then on the 24th of February, they're doing Mendelssohn and Tchaikovsky. But they're opening with an overture by Grazina Bat- Batzewitz. Not pronouncing that right. Okay, so she was a Polish composer. Wow, so this is the first 
Is this the first female? Yeah, this is the first female. In one, two, three, four concerts. So four concerts. Out of five concerts in February, one female composer. And she's dead. She doesn't need to pay rent. We have female composers who need to pay rent. You can hire them instead. Yeah, and that was another thing. Ah, oh, this is the other thing that came up at the conference. Okay, I'm done with this orchestra. Like, fuck off. Um, is that a lot of administrators, producers you know, of orchestras will sort of hide behind the bureaucracy of hiring and working with a living composer like it's impossible. Um, and it's not. Thankfully, there was a PRS representative there who spoke up and was like, if you want to talk about how to engage with living composers, talk to us. It's, you know, it's very doable. We're here for you. We'll, we'll walk you through the process because it might, you know, it is different from composer to composer. Um, dep and also depending on the work and whether it's you know, a new commission or it's just an older piece that was written a couple years ago. You know, it just sort of depends. And you know, I think administrators hide behind that bureaucracy. Like, it's not okay. Like, it's your job to fucking make room for non-white male artists. Okay, our next orchestra is the Bath Philharmonia. So let's look at who their conductors are. So their main musical director is Jason Thornton. Conduct, he's conducted orchestras all over the UK, Europe. Um, <laughs> we don't say this anymore. <laughs> News flash. <laughs> we don't say Far East anymore. Um... Yeah, so he's, like, been around Beijing Symphony Orchestra. This is the farthest he's gone. Um, Jason is a community music leader in a couple of different projects throughout the UK. So a man. A man, just like the other orchestras. Where are the women? Where are the queer um, directors? Where it's like, just let us in. It's okay. Okay, so now they're concerts. The next concert looks like it's on the 8th of March. Um, pianist Laura Melda is playing... Chopin's first piano concerto and then they're going to play Mendelssohn the Fingal's Cave and they're going to play a Clara Schumann and then they're going to play the second movement of the Mendelssohn Scottish Symphony and then the Tarantea from the fourth symphony oh you know what? I okay so this is all white <laughs> composers that's a problem um that's another thing that was brought up at the at the conference is the orchestras want to justify all white programs by bringing in an underrepresented performer and again that's not okay <laughs> it's not okay like yes bring in laura obviously but like and play whatever she wants to play you know um but then fucking bring in some living black composers, some living Asian composers, some, you know, some disabled composers, some neurodivergent composers. Fuck. Um, I will say I'm a fan of how they did pick, like, the second movement of this symphony, just the, the dance from the fort, like, that is kind of fun. But also problematic is that he, Mendelssohn, fucking gets three pieces and Clara gets one I'm counting the character pieces as like one thing um not okay play more Clara like come on okay so 
Their next concert is a gala. I'm going to skip that one because I'm not really looking at like education settings. I mean, I should, but I imagine they're just as racist programming as like their normal stuff. So, okay. The next concert, first concert, is on 22nd of April. So it looks like they're doing one a month. Um, and the program is Ravel Piano Concerto. WC's La Mer, The Ocean, and then Eleanor Alberga's Sun Warrior, Mirrors of Blue, and the Duca Sorcerer's Apprentice. Three dudes, one female. I don't know Eleanor. Jamaican composer, all right. I'm going to leave this. Okay, so that's amazing. Program more of her stuff. You know, it's, it's not that hard. It's, it's really, like, not cool. And I wonder how long her piece is. I just don't know. There was a sound. Um. Yeah, I mean, this is, again, it's not enough. It's not enough. We need to be playing more living composers, more black composers, Jamaican black composers. Um, like, it's not enough. Like, you're making living composers fight for this one diversity spot and giving the majority of the concert and playing time to white, dead guys. I guess, yeah, like, just sick of it. I'm just sick of it. Okay, so one more here. Um, the next concert is on 5th of July. Program is Lark Ascending, Vaughn Williams. I think his first name is pronounced like Rife, isn't it? I keep forgetting that. It's not Ralph. It's like Rife. Um, so they're the Williams and then Ravel's <laughs> Zigane. <laughs> um, and then a movement of Beethoven, Dvorak Slav Dance, Slavonic Dance, then a Brahms, and then Rimsky Korsakov, and a Rossini, Dead White Guy, Dead White Guy, Dead White Guy, Dead. How many dead white guys can we fit in one program? Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven's the magic number. <laughs> it's insane. All white dead dudes. Okay, I think I'm done with Bath. Bye, Bath. The next ensemble that's on the list is a chamber ensemble, um, but they were on the orchestra list of that I found on Wikipedia. Um, so we're going to we're going to look at it. This is the Oracle Ensemble. Let's look at who their director is. Maybe they're more of a like circular leadership, lateral leadership type org. Um they're based in Glasgow. So I hope I get to see them, hear them. Um I'm not, is this, I'm not really finding, um, let's see, news next. So I couldn't find any info on who, who they are. When I click on about, it just goes to like this picture thing of them and some like general information about them. Yeah. Okay, so news. So they have they had a concert in September twenty twenty. God, I hope they weren't wiped out by COVID. They did the Stravinsky's um The Soldier.
Hmm. Soldier's Tale. So I guess, yeah, let's look at some of their previous projects instead. So one of them's called Rewrite. And it's classical works by Steve Reich, Johnny Greenwood, and Sarah Hayes. So again, two dudes, one female. At least they're all alive. Oh, I guess I don't know about Johnny Greenwood over here. So let's check. Um, yeah, he's alive. So they're all alive. That's good. But they're also all white. Um, oh, here, here's, okay, so they rewrote stuff by, like, pop bands. Um, so Johnny Greenwood did a Radiohead cover. Stuart Copeland did a police cover. Sarah Hayes did Admiral Fellow cover. Bryce Desner did the National cover. Richard Reed Perry did an Arcade Fire cover. And then there was a Frank Zappa and Steve Reich performance. So dude, 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 female, dude, dude. Despicable. What a shame. Like, let people participate in art making. Like, why is the professional world so fucking anti female, anti disabled, like anti black, anti brown? Let's check out the magic night. Okay, so. The program doesn't say. Um, let's see. Magic Night is a dance and chamber music work that will appeal to children and adults alike. So there's a choreographer. Oh, the composer. So they do Ville's long lost orchestrations. So, an entire concert devoted to a dead white dude. <laughs> okay. I get the idea. Moving on. So, the last orchestra we're going to look at today, the last ensemble, is the Academy of St. Olives. I wonder if I'm pronouncing that right, or if there's like a weird British way to say that. You never know. Okay. So about the orchestra, let's look at who's the director. Oh, Alan George. We got a white dude. And then the leader is Claire Jowett. So I'm assuming that's like the CEO, the leader. Yeah, I'm assuming she's the leader is like the CEO and then music director is Alan George. Okay. Now let's go to forthcoming concerts. So on Saturday, the next one is Saturday, 25th June. <laughs> Beethoven, Ives, Strauss, Mozart. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> okay. And that's the only upcoming concert they have coming. Um, they might perform on Saturday, 24th September. Okay, so that's today's episode. We're going to keep, we're going to keep chomping on these orchestras. Um, because I, I think people really just don't believe me when I say how many all white programs are happening. Um, and it's really concerning as I'm a composer and I'm wondering how the fuck am I ever going to make a living? Like, if, you know, white co male composers tell us that it's really hard to make a living. So if it's hard for them, imagine how hard it is for an underrepresented person. Like, it's just disgusting. Lack of support that there is. Um, but okay, thanks for joining us. Bye.